Now that we've learned how to control a bit of audio using an AV audio player and play, pause and volume functions, we're going to put that and a little bit more together to build the back to back app. So this contains all the functions that you've seen already. We can play and believe it or not, it is playing there even though the sound isn't very clear on this version of the emulator, but you can see that the scrubber is moving along the slider there. And we can even move the scrubber ourselves to update the location of the song. And that of course is something that we haven't covered in the previous video. So my advice is to have a Google and see if you can work out how to move a scrubber along with the song and indeed how to move the song along when you move the scrubber. Everything else though we have covered so it should just be a bit of revision of navigation bars and toolbars. And hopefully your piece of music will sound a little bit better than mine does. Best of luck, go for it. All right, I hope that went well. Of course, we're gonna start by creating a new project. So single view application as usual and back to back is our product name. Create that on the desktop and then we'll jump straight over to main storyboard and start building our interface. So hopefully you remember we need a navigation bar along the top. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit so that it's not overlapping the info bar at the top there. And a toolbar at the bottom. And just checking these don't need any constraints. They look good on all screen sizes. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna add the buttons first. So we're gonna want a bar button item at the top there, which is gonna be our play. There we go. And then down the bottom, bottom left, we're gonna have our pause button. And then we'll bring in another item and a flexible space to stretch them out to the edge. And that one's going to be stop. Hmm, except it doesn't really make sense as a stop button, I don't think. So I'm actually going to change that to custom and just have the word stop. All right, now time to find our picture of back. And as before, I'm going to get my image from Wikipedia. So there he is in all his glory. And I'm just going to take that image, control click and save image as. And just rename that to back. Okay, so now back over to our app and then back to Finder to bring in both the back image and our sheep MP3 file, copy the items in, perfect. And then let's create an image view. Just gonna go in the middle there And we'll bring in our back image, aspect fit. Stretch him out a little bit, I think. There we go, that'll do. Okay, and then we're gonna have two sliders. One which represents the volume 
and a second which represents the location in the song. Let's just stretch it out there. And line those up. Okay, and the location one is going to have an initial value of zero because the piece of music will be at the beginning when the app starts. There we go. So there's our app layout. And so let's start adding our outlets and actions. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I've selected the bar button there. There we go. So this is play and we want an action. Here we want volume changed as an action. And also volume slider as an outlet. Next, we want the scrubber. Moved as an action. And the scrubber itself as an outlet. Finally, we've got stop as an action and pause. Also an action. There we go. So now it's just a matter of putting all the code in that we need. So let's jump over to viewcontroller.swift and start by importing AV Foundation and then setting up our audio player. There we go. And in view did load again, we'll set up the player. So we'll set up the audio path. To be equal to bundle dot main as before dot path for resource. And then back dot mp3. And in fact, to save that being typed twice, let's define it out here. And then we're going to set up our do try catch. And we're going to try to set up the player to be equal to AV audio player using the contents of a URL. And we're going to create a URL from a file URL with path. There we go. And the path is audio path. And we need to unwrap the audio path there. Okay. So now we've set up our player. Let's put in our individual methods. So play is simply player dot play. Volume change we've already seen is just player dot volume is equal to volume slider dot value. Next, it's the scrubber which is the new bit. So let's have a quick Google and see if we can figure out a way to scrub through our audio. So we might go for something like Swift audio scrubber, something like that. Let's see if we can find a result. Here we go. Audio playback progress as UI slider in Swift. That looks pretty perfect. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they're asking the question that we need. That first result was not quite what we want. 
And similarly, the second one uses a number of methods that we're not using. But this third one here, this looks very promising. So we're creating our player. And here what we're doing is setting the maximum value of the scrub slider to the duration of the piece of music. And then when the scrub is moved, we can set the current time of the player to the value of the slider. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's give it a try. So that means down here where the player is set up, we need to set the maximum value of the scrubber. So remember by default, that will be one. We're gonna set that to player dot duration. So that will set the maximum value of the scrubber to be the length of the piece of music. I think we do have a problem with types there. So player duration is a time interval or double. So let's change that to a float. Okay. And now when the scrubber is moved, we can just set the player current time to be equal to the scrubber value because the scrubber now goes from zero to the length of the piece of music. Similarly though, I think we'll need to convert the scrubber value into a time interval, which is the type of variable that player dot current time is. Okay, so that now should allow us to scrub through the piece of music using the scrubber. We want the opposite to be true as well though. We want the scrubber to move on its own when the piece of music is playing. And to do that, we're gonna need a timer. So let's set up our timer variable, just as we've done before. And then when we hit play, as well as starting the piece of music playback, we're going to start the timer. So the timer is going to be equal to timer dot schedule timer with a time interval of one. I think every second is, is fine. And then selector, we're going to use hash selector and then view controller dot and then just so that it can auto predict it we'll call the method update scrubber we can now access that using view controller dot update scrubber and repeats is true So with update scrubber, then we want to do the opposite of this. We want to set the scrubber value to be equal to the player current time. That will move the scrubber along as we go. And we'll need to convert this to a float so that we've got the variable types the same. Ah, and I think I selected the wrong Type there, we're not doing an invocation, we're doing a selector. And then when we use a selector, we need target of the view controller or self in there as well. And we also need user info being nil. Okay, let that be a lesson to you. Make sure you choose the right one when Xcode predicts a number of different methods for you. Okay, so now the scrubber should update as the song plays. The volume we're okay with. So pause. When we press pause, we want to do two things. We want to pause the player and also stop the timer. So timer invalidate. And when the stop button is pressed, we're going to stop the timer 
and to restart the piece of audio we're actually going to use player dot pause and then we're just going to restart the player itself using the same code as before except we don't need to set the scrubber maximum value again because that's going to be the same as before so this will have the effect of starting at zero you could also use player dot current time is equal to zero that would have the same effect all right so let's give it a try we should now find that all of those buttons work as required let's see and here we go the images are a little bit off center unfortunately but hopefully everything will work so again the sound is playing but not particularly clearly but you can see the scrubber is moving along there which is great let's try pausing and that does indeed stop the scrubber if i play it again we do hear the sound although it's not great i can turn it up and also turn it down there we go and stopping does indeed stop the playback and it does restart it but not until we press the play button again which restarts the timer so one small addition is to update the scrubber back when the user presses stop so we'll just set the scrubber value to zero and there we go just a nice simple one there nothing too complicated but hope you enjoyed that one and are thinking about all sorts of music based apps that you could now build in this section we've got one more key skill that we're going to be working with and that is seeing how we can deal with the accelerometer through shaking the phone and interpreting swipes on the screen and we'll do both of those in the next video